Right, so I bought this thing last year and it, it's fair to say it's pretty good. As someone who's only just got started in like the freelancing sort of world, this thing is a godsend to me. To be able to capture 6K in the world of cinema cameras at the price that it's at is really, really good. Now I would like to say that, yeah, I'm a small freelancer. This thing wasn't given to me. I've put every single penny of like the last year into this piece of kit. I've been building this for like the past couple of months now and it's fair to say I think it's nearly done. So what I thought I'd do is I'd make a video on it just because I like watching other people's Blackmagic rigs. I like taking inspiration off a load of other people. And I know there's a lot of people who have brought this camera like me who don't have all the money in the world but they wanted like to capture the best footage possible with the money they had. Because it's quite a cheap cinema camera rig as far as like cinema camera rigs go. And there's just a lot of cost efficient things that I do put on here to make it look bigger, to be able to like shoot easier and stuff. So yeah. I thought I'd make this little video. But yeah, I think we should just uh, get into the rig. I think what I'll do is I'll just go over each single piece of equipment and then go over why I like it and why it's in this rig. So yeah, if we just go over to the desk now, if you have a look, there's a lot of plants here because I uh, added them in for the uh, the thumbnail and now I actually really like them in the shot. So like, they're just gonna stay there. So yeah, let's uh, go on to the first piece, which is the uh, the actual body of the camera, the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera. I know it's not exactly pocket size, but I think it just means that it's a bit more portable. I was gonna go with a 4K version, but then I realized that the, the mount on it was like a micro four thirds mount and all of my lenses were like EF mount. So I thought, why do I have to spend like 1,300 on a 4K camera and then spend 600 pounds on an adapter when I literally just could get the 6K, which already has the EF mount and it also does 6K. So yeah, I saved up a little bit extra and got the 6K. Now, the reason I got this camera was literally just because I realized that 90% of the work that I was doing as a freelancer was in video and I wanted to really just step up my game like that little bit further. So I decided to invest in a piece of solely video making equipment. And this thing is amazing. If you don't know what it is, it's basically a really, really cheap cinema camera that produces really, really good looking footage for the price. And when I say it's cheap, it's cheap for a cinema camera. Some cinema camera bodies can cost up to like 10 and thousands of pounds and this one's only 2,000 so in the world of like cinema cameras this is a very very good price especially for the quality that you get out of this thing if you are like a videographer or a freelancer doing that sort of work and you haven't had a look at this camera take a look at it because it really can like take your game up to the next level and teach you new things about the industry such as manual focus like I never used to manual focus now I'm really good at it and I'm, I'm really glad that I learned the skill by having this black magic because now that's a skill that I use on every set no matter what camera I use. The cage that I've put around it is the small rig cage and that's just because I had a lot of small rig products at the time and yeah, that, that's the reason why I had a lot of small rig products. So I went with the small rig one. One thing I like about the small rig cage is it comes with a little Allen key on the uh, bottom. So that's a nice little addition. Now on the back, I actually have a sun hood. And the reason why I have this is because I don't like the gap between the battery and the screen. You'll see what I mean later, but there's a gap like between the screen and the V-mount battery on the back. And I don't like that gap. So what I can do is I can just get a magnetic sun hood and just snap that to the back. And then it just makes the camera seem a little bit more beefy. And also it keeps a few sun glares out, which is uh, nice considering the Blackmagic screen isn't that bright. Now I can't show all the lenses that I'm using for this thing because I'm actually filming on two of them. But I used the Tokina 11 to 16 2.8, which is this camera here. I used the Sigma 18 to 35, which is the top view camera here. And the other lens that I use, which is my favorite lens, is the 50 to 100 1.8. Now I don't have a lot of money to spend on like prime cine lenses and stuff like that. So what I've done is I've gone with three different lenses that cover all the focal lengths I need at really nice apertures. I don't have to change lenses that often unless I want to go for a completely different look and feel. But these lenses really cover everything that I need to shoot and they all go down to incredibly low apertures. And I mostly keep the 50 to 100 on here just because I'm a big fan of like compression and stuff. Obviously each lens has its place but I normally keep the 50 to 100 on there so that's going to go on there first. Obviously if I put it on a gimbal I have to use a smaller lens but if I'm going to go for a handheld rig I normally use the 50 to 100 or the 18 to 35. Next thing that I'm going to add to here is a handle and the reason why I use this small rig handle here is because at the bottom it actually has a space for the Samsung T5 SSD card which you can literally just slot in there. And that just hides away in there because I, for some reason I just don't like the, the Samsung SSD card like sitting on the top. I do have the adapter for it, but that's just so I can put it onto a gimbal. If I'm gonna be using my main handheld rig, it's staying in the grip. So yeah, we can just put the grip onto there, tighten that up, 
now we've got a nice little grip to stabilize our shooting. Now a lot of you know the battery life on this thing is terrible. I used to go with these little Canon LP6 ones from Power Extra and I have about five of these because if I need to stay really quick and nimble and I can't take the big rig out with me and I can only have the camera and a lens, I just take about five of these but obviously they're not a great solution. So to combat that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna stick a massive V-mount battery on the back. I went with the newer one just because, uh, well, it was, the, it was the cheapest one available and like I said, I don't have the biggest budget on this like sort of rig so you'll find that like a lot of the things on here are just like the cheapest option but obviously that's because I'm a starting freelancer I'm just trying to invest into like my business and stuff so yeah a lot of these things are not going to be the most expensive. Yeah this is the, the V-mount that I use, the uh, mount that I use for it is the uh, Fotka DP500, I don't know if I've said that right but yeah this thing just goes on the back and you can just clip it in like that and it uh, lasts me the whole day. It's a good V-mount battery. But obviously we just can't stick this thing straight onto the rig because it, there's nowhere to put it. So the way that we're gonna attach it is by these 12 inch 15 millimeter rods. But the reason why I have 12 is just because at the start of the year when I started to build my rig, my rig was quite small. So I went with the, uh, the 12 inch ones. And now that my rig's a little bit bigger, I can just about fit the entire rig onto these 12 inch rods. So that's why I haven't got these 16 ones because if it ain't broke, I don't need to fix it. So yeah, the way that we're gonna attach these is by this small rig base plate. This just goes into the bottom and is screwed on via two screws by a Allen key. Just gonna screw this onto the bottom. Now that the base plate's on, I can finally pop in the 15 millimeter rods. Now that the rods are on, this is what it looks like. And what I can do now is I can just take the V-mount battery and just slide it on. And now the rig's actually looking pretty good. One thing that I can't see though because of the sun hood is the screen, which is why I need to add an external monitor. The reason why I got a seven inch screen is just because I like the way it looks on the camera. I like being able to see everything really large. And the way I attach this is for a screw on the top handle. What I do is I just screw the top handle onto the screen. Then what I can do is I can screw the top handle onto the Blackmagic. So yeah, now that that's on, the rig is nearly complete. There's just one thing that is missing and that is a follow focus. If you don't know this already, the Blackmagic doesn't have autofocus. Well, it, it does, but it's really, really bad. Like it is really bad. I think there's no real point in using the autofocus on this. So what I use is the Tilter Nano Nucleus, which is a wireless focusing system. And this thing just connects onto the bottom of the rod and you can literally just latch that in and that's all ready to go. Then I attach the motor onto the other rod and it just about reaches the focusing throw of the 50 to 100. And normally what I have on the 50 to 100 is a little like focusing ring that helps it grip with the uh, focusing motor, but I've actually lost that, so I do actually need to get another one. So that's the only thing that's not really being featured on this rig. Along with the wires, I don't really need to show you how I wire this thing. The V-mount battery just powers it all. So if you can imagine this thing with a few wires hanging out of it, that's basically my rig build. And now that's the reason why I have the sun hood. I just don't like this little gap in between the V-mount battery and the screen. I just think having the uh, the sun hood there just makes it feel a bit more complete. And uh, you know, if I ever need to take it off, it's magnetic. So if I need to see the screen, I can just pop it off and pop it back on. But yeah, that's the uh, Black Magic rig. It works for me really well. And you know, it's, it's quite cost efficient. It's not the most expensive rig in the world. But yeah, if you do like the look of anything on this rig, I'll put everything down in the description below because I think this is a very solid rig. There is no matte box on the end. I'll just use a normal ND filter just because it's a bit more cost efficient that way. But yeah, I think this is a great rig. And if you do like videography or like a freelancing or anything like that, I think this is a great investment to get. And if you want to see any more videos on this camera, let me know in the comments because I'll happily do them. But yeah, I want to say thank you for watching and hope you enjoy these cinematics of the Blackmagic rig.